Do you have an iPhone 12 Pro Max that after the screen repair, you had either Face ID stop working, ear speaker flex, or even the brightness stop working? Most likely happen is that the ear speaker flex got torn. And the problem is you cannot just replace this flex. There's paired components here that are tied to Face ID. So in today's video, I'm walking through how to swap over these sensors onto a new flex. So you get Face ID working and everything else working. Hi, I'm Jesse from VCC Board Repairs. Thanks a lot for joining us here on the channel. And if you appreciate these type of videos that I make where I walk through the whole process on repairing a device, hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share this video with all your friends. Also, don't forget to check out the links down below in the description because I will have all the tools linked that I'll use in this repair. Also, I'll have some cool t-shirts like this one and some other repair related shirts. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. So this is the ear speaker flex that's torn. As you'll see, there's a tear right there. So this causes uh, multiple issues. One of the main common causes is the screen goes dim after it boots. So if you see my sh YouTube short video that I have on my channel, uh, an iPhone 12, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max, 12 Mini, if you don't have this cable plugged in, it will go super dim once it boots. So the Apple logo, when you first boot it up, will be fine. And as soon as it gets to the home screen, it goes super dim and you can't really see anything. And that is, that's what this will cause. So we gotta fix this. But it's not practical to run jumpers, as though, although you can see the traces, the outline of the traces here, it's not practical because it's in, it's in a weird bend and stuff. So if you can imagine if you try to install this on the screen and you break one of the jumpers, then it's gonna have problems. So it's best to just swap over the whole flex. So let's uh, inspect the flex real quick. By the way, this is my first time trying this on this model, so wish me luck. Okay, so here's the microphone. This is the, like you're doing a selfie video, it records with this microphone. Um, this is, this appears to be the ambient light sensor, possibly. And then this is the dot projector. I believe. So there's multiple sensors in here, but this one for sure is Face ID paired. So we gotta transfer over this one. So if this is similar like the 11 and 10 series, then we gotta swap over this one for uh, True Tone and this one for Face ID. So let's just do this one first because this is the most important. True Tone is kind of like a secondary kind of feature. Not many people really know about it. Well, let's do this one first. All right, so the back, let's inspect the back. So the back has, this is metal plate it seems, and some components here. Same over here. All right, and then this big thing here is the speaker. Now the speaker blows out. You can replace it pretty simply. You can see there's two solder joints. And then there's a piece of the flex here that's kind of just glued down. This is not soldered on, so you could just remove that. But for this video, we're gonna fix the flex. So what I like to do is use this little steel block, link in the description. And then, oh, this is different than the other models. Because the other models, when I lay it like this flat, it lays perfectly flat like this. And it lets me access the sensor pretty easily, but uh, let me see. Let me figure out. So you guys are watching me live, figuring out a technique for this because I've never done this model. It's the, the design is way different than the other models. So like 11 and 10 series or X series. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some hat on tape. This is like heat resistant tape. I'm gonna tape this all down. So it's like this. 
So you can see how the sensor, the sensor is just hanging off the edge. And what I'm gonna do is actually heat up the sensor from the bottom using my iron and then lift up the sensor. Hopefully I don't damage anything. So <laughs> wish me luck. All right, so the first step is to add some flux. And what I like to do is just put it around the edges. And then this will be enough to spread it underneath the pads once the heat comes in. It will just kind of naturally spread due to physics. All right. The trick here is have tweezers on one hand and your iron on the other. So I'm using the uh, tool 3D tweezers and I'm going to put the iron underneath. And then just turn on my fume extractor. So you gotta be careful because if you leave this on for too long, there it goes. Look at that, it came right off. All right, if you leave this on for too long, the sensor will physically melt and then it's game over. All right, so this is what the pads of the sensor look like. Let's see the back of the, oh look, it looks clean. So this might actually be a pretty simple job. So, Let me do this. Let me prep these pads. This will make it easier to solder onto the other flex. So I'll just use this area as a platform. I'm going to use, I'm gonna use 138 low melt solder. And as you can expect, it is linked in the description. If there's anything you want me to link in the description, let me know. Uh, all right, so I ran some on the pads and then this large pad is probably ground. So it's not important, but it's also, you gotta be careful. If you do that one with the blob of solder on your iron, what's gonna happen is a giant blob, that pad is gonna be a lot larger than the other ones and it won't sit evenly on on the flex. So the, the goal is to have every pad to be about the same size, height. All right, it should be good. Some isopropyl alcohol to kind of clean off any flex residue. Oh, sensor went flying. I'm getting my little towel here to clean it. All right, uh, should be good. Okay, so let me save this. So we gotta make sure we don't mix these up because if you mix up the sensor, so this is my original sensor. Now, I suppose I could do this one next. Since that was so easy, let's try this one. The, this is the ALS, I believe. By the way, um, I don't know too much of these models yet, so keep in mind, I might be wrong about the terminology. So the same, same process, add some flux. Use the iron as a preheater kind of, or bottom heater. The iron is set to 750 Fahrenheit, by the way, which I believe is 375 Celsius ish. Look at that. All right, so for this one, actually, so there's, this goes in one way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it if I can. So let me do this. I'm gonna mark it like that. So that lines up with the flex. 
So let's just use that as a kind of indicator so we don't lose track because one thing is this only goes one direction. I guess there's a marker here. But yeah, you don't want to put this backwards because then it won't work. You could fry something. So same thing, prep the pads. And I'm gonna use 138 again. A little blob of solder in my iron and then just run over all the pads. There we go. Now we have some nice prep pads. Some alcohol and toothbrush. And where's my little towel? All right, this should be good. So both of these paired components, the originals are here off to my side to make sure we don't lose them. All right, so now we can get rid of this flex. Remember, this is the torn flex, so we for sure know this is my original. And then I have Another flex. Now this is one I got from a donor phone. Let's see, how is this? Okay, so lay it out the same. I'll put my little towel here because the, the little brick here is, is soaked with alcohol and it makes my working mat really gross. Okay, so same, we're gonna do the same thing here. Now this is an OEM pull from another 12 Pro Max phone I have. Well, not a full working device, so. All right, so same thing. Now this is the, this is not paired. So we wanna just remove it and get rid of it. And then we're gonna put the other one on here. So same thing. So I have a little blob of flux there, right here. All right. So this was a lot easier than other models. Usually the other ones require a little more heat. So just put your iron on it and lift it up. All right, so this is the bad one. So I'm gonna put it way off over here because I don't want to mix them up. I've done that in the past and I had to basically redo the job multiple times until it worked and I don't <laughs> want to do that again. Now, uh, top secret hint or trick, if you end up messing up this flex, there is still a solution. Uh, if you know a shop that does that is IRP certified, that's an independent repair shop uh, from Apple, they can replace these flex cables. If you don't know someone, I can get it done for you at a nominal price so let me know all right so this one is gone as well all right so now let's prep these pads as well so add some flux now this time i'm going to use 183 solder don't ask me why i just kind of 
do it this way and it has worked for me. Um, the models. All right, that one's prepped. All right, so this one, see that center pad? It looks way bigger than the other ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wick some of it off so we could kind of flatten it out. Flatten that curve that's on the... So yeah, that looks a lot flatter now. Okay, so before you solder on the sensor, it's best to clean it because this thing since the flex is so thin, the flux on here burns really fast and easy. So you don't want any of that nasty residue on here. Because then it blocks the sensor itself from making contact with all the pads. All right, you want to look at it, be nice and shiny. Same for this one. See how it has like that orange kind of tint to it? That's the burnt flux. Now this one's a little trickier because it's just hanging in midair. There's nothing to press against it. Let me put my needle behind it. And Yeah, see, there's still some residue there. Although it appears to be very thin. All right, yeah, it's pretty much all gone, so I'll just leave it. Okay, so. Step one is to, oh, those pads here look a little thin. All right, let's just try it. Cause there's nice solder pads on the sensor itself. So let's see if this works. All right, so here's the sensor. So if you just kind of look at it, this is the direction it goes. The square is on this side, so. Yeah, flip it over this way and eyeball it as far as the alignment. Yeah, I remember this weird cutout here was on the top side. Then come in with your iron. Now keep in mind the residual, not the residual, but like the, I guess residual heat from the iron. Just being close to it is enough to kind of start spreading some of that flux. So you want to do quick little taps, otherwise you can melt stuff. All right, I'm going to leave it like that and then wait a few seconds. All right, drop some ISO. Now you can get ISO on the sensor, at least on the older models. So let's see if it works here. It shouldn't affect the actual sensor. All right, uh, here, let me do this. So I don't know if you guys can see, but if you're doing this job, you should be able to see it through your, through your scope, whether or not there's uh, pads making contact. From my view, it kind of looks like it is. So I'm just gonna leave it. I don't want to put too much heat, like I mentioned, because you do you can risk burning the sensor, melting the actual plastic that the sensor is housed in. And then over here, thin layer of flux sensor. You can also see that pad here on the bottom left is like a corners cut off, which corresponds to 
this corner over here. So if we flip this over like this, it should match up with that scratch we add. Oh, I moved it. Yeah, so the scratch is up here on the top, which corresponds also with that little pad that's cut out. So this one's tricky because it's a lot thinner. It's also floating in midair. So let's see if I can get this. So just quick little taps. And you see the bubble, the flux bubbling. Take your heat away because that's when things are burning. You don't want to burn stuff. So let me clean this off as well. By the way, wait for the solder to cool down before you blow uh, some of this away. So dropping a few drops of ISO and waiting should be more than enough to cool it down. If you just start blowing, then the solder is probably still liquid and you're going to blow the sensor away. And then you'll lose it and then you'll be complaining in my comments that you lost it. Maybe. All right. So in theory, this flex is fixed. Now let's go test it. Actually, one quick, one more quick inspection. Basically look at it from every angle. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and test it. And it didn't work. So as you can see, it says, unable to activate face city on this iPhone. So unfortunately, uh, probably the reball was bad. So let's go ahead and try it again and see if we can get it working this time. All right, so let's go ahead and tape this back onto that little steel block I use. Some more Kapton tape. Because the other piece of Kapton was... Uh, destroyed by the alcohol. All right, this is getting a little tricky. There we go. All right, so that should be good. Also, I got this side a little closer to the block, so it kind of holds it a little more stable. Although that one's a lower priority, let's get the face ID working. So, add some flux again, and so we can pull the sensor. What I'm gonna do also is, I'm gonna try to pull the sensor right away so it kind of gives me an indicator of the solder that's left behind whether or not uh, the pads were soldered on right uh, actually it does look like some cold joints there so let me do this I'm gonna essentially yeah see how some of these are kind of gray most likely they didn't make contact or high chance then make contact. Should have had a different texture. Now it's harder for me to describe, but it's also good to have two sets of tweezers near near you because you need, need to be able to swap hands. So I'm gonna try 183 solder this time. Goal is to make these pads nice and fluffy, nice and tall, so they make good contact with the flex. This pad over here is a little, looks a little dry. I think I got it. All right, you'll see how it's kind of turning a little orangey because that's the flux burning. Let me also prep these as well. Now for the older models, there was a stencil that I had gotten to reball it, but doing that, it kind of, it was still kind of weird. So I still just hand reball like I am now. Since it's such a small sensor, it doesn't uh, necessarily need a reball, an actual reball with paste. 
All right, one thing you'll notice here is some paths that are bridged. Those are appear to be normally bridged, so I'm just gonna leave it like that and just add a little more solder here. Actually, those solder pads look a little dry. Let me feed it a little more solder. Uh, let's go with that. So this is my, I keep mentioning, this is my first attempt, so hopefully I'm successful. If not, then maybe I can get some tips from you guys, some tips on what I did wrong or how to do it better. And if you're wondering, I'm not using hot air because this is very delicate sensor. It melts real easy. Trust me, I've tried it before on the other models. Yeah, so if this doesn't work, I'll probably just send it out to do the to the IRP shop to just replace the sensor, the flex, to the because they have access to uh, calibrating this stuff. I don't. All right, let me visually inspect. Also, you got to be careful with this flex because you can see the black mask, you know, around the pads. It starts to kind of fall apart if you if you use too much heat for too long, or you solder on it too much. So let's try this one more time. All right, so let me just add a thin layer over all the pads and line this up again hopefully this time no, let me rotate it So I have to rotate it so that my iron has more surface contact. Although it's not making any difference. Let me try from this side. Alright, so you can see how I'm just kind of rubbing the, the flex a few seconds at a time. You don't want to hold it there for too long. Okay, and also it's good to do this because if you blow away the alcohol, the, the flex also blows away with it and lets you get a better look. Oh, you see one solder joint is visible there. All right, let's, let's go ahead and try this. All right, I got it all, uh, we'll just have it all assembled. Let's go ahead and play it into charge and see what happens. So we have the Apple logo. All right, so, so this is a moment of truth. Hopefully this time it works. If not, like I mentioned, I'll have to just send it out. I don't like to spend too much time on stuff that I know there's another solution. And the price is reasonable that it's, you know, worth it. So let's see what happens. All right, cool. So one thing you do notice, there's a light flashing up here. 
is very uh, a good sign. That means that's the face ID sensor is working. Then I'm gonna type in the pin code. And look at that, there's no pop-up saying face ID failed. So now let me go to the face ID settings. Face ID, pin code. All right, so here's the moment of truth. Set up alternate appearance. Oh, look at that. Face ID fix. So it was success. We swapped over the paired sensors from here, put on this new flex, and it's working. That's awesome. Cool, this is my first one. So glad it worked. Now, one thing I do want to check is uh, display. Oh, look at that. Also, True Tone is working. So we didn't lose that as well. So these are the two main functions of the Flex. Man, that was <laughs> first try. Well, actually, second try. First try, you saw it didn't work. But yeah, uh, swap over Flood Illuminator ALS due to this torn Flex. And we got it working. Amazing. So, yeah, <laughs> that's it. So there you have it. The repair process has been completed. We got Face ID working. We have True Tone and everything else is working. So as you see, it is a pretty straightforward process, but it's not easy if you've never soldered before. But hopefully this video gave you some insight as to what it takes to repair this device. Make sure you smash that like button if you found this video helpful. Comment down below if you have any questions about the repair, any of the techniques I used, or any of the tools I used. I will also link all those tools in the description below, as well as my t-shirts are linked there. And if you buy a t-shirt, it really helps out the channel, it helps us buy more equipment to improve the YouTube videos. So thanks a lot for joining, and I'll see you next week in the next one.